Obviously, in light of everything that's going on at the moment, we all believe rape and sexual assault are heinous crimes. We all want rapists behind bars. But I feel that in this climate, logic, evidence, and data are kind of being lost in translation. And also, there's a very pervasive, you're with us or against us mentality that's really doing a lot more harm than good. So my question to you is, how can we best stand up for the importance of due process and the presumption of innocence while also doing what we can to support survivors? Okay, so I think that uh, there's actually a third question that I want to address that you didn't even ask. So I'll address the first two and then there's a third one that I think is implicit in the first two. So when it comes to standing up for due process, the answer is that we actually have to stand up for it, even in cases where it makes us uncomfortable or even where we believe that the person may be responsible for something bad because once you lose due process for one, you lose due process for everybody, obviously. Uh, when it comes to standing up for sexual assault survivors, I think the idea that we ought to take everybody's first account with the respect it deserves means not dismissing, not downplaying, but it also means asking the proper questions in order to get at the truth. That doesn't mean intimidating people, it doesn't mean calling people liars without evidence that they're lying, it doesn't mean mocking them, obviously, God forbid. It doesn't mean doing any of those things. You know, I've, I've, throughout the Christine Blasey Ford thing, I, kept, I keep saying over and over and over, I'm not calling her a liar, I'm not mocking her. I don't know if she's lying, I don't know if she's telling the truth, I don't know if she's misremembering, I don't know any of that stuff. All I know is that due process requires such and such to happen. Now, the, the real answer in the end to a lot of what's happening, and here's, here's the really unpopular part with the left. The left destroyed traditional mores with regard to relations between the sexes. Destroyed them wholesale. So the original idea was that men were supposed to act with honor and chivalry in protecting women, and women were supposed to look for, for example, relationships just as men were. Sexual activity was supposed to be confined, this was at least the ideal, was supposed to be confined to committed relationships, particularly marriage. Not everybody lived up to that, but a huge number of people did. In fact, once people got pregnant, people basically got married. There are studies from the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s shows an awful lot of seven-month marriage babies, right? People who are sleeping together, getting pregnant, and then the couple gets married. When you don't teach men to protect women, you get men who will victimize women. And when you don't teach women that they ought to cherish men who are responsible and good, all you end up doing is incentivizing bad male behavior. The feminist movement was not wrong when they said men are acting like pigs. They were wrong when they said women also ought to act like pigs and that this is a solution to our problem. Because the reverse, because now what's happened is they got rid of all the traditional mores about how sex ought to be connected with love and ought to be connected with relationships. They got rid of all of that. It was just a bodily function now. Except, except when it comes to actual sexual assault, we treat that differently than any other bodily function, obviously. But th that's the problem, right? So they, they create the standard where sex is basically a throwaway item, sort of like eating. And then we treat sex very differently when it comes to what we all know it is, which is a deeply important and intimate part of a person's life. And then we attempt to backdoor standards of consent that, frankly, don't make any sense in a real-life context. So you get college campuses in California saying that what you need is a yes-means-yes yes standard, where you have like a, first, like a legal checklist, I guess, where every time you do anything in the bedroom, you're supposed to ask, am I allowed to touch your hand? Am I allowed to touch your shoulder? Am I allowed to touch your hair? Which has never ever resulted in actual fulfillment of a sexual encounter, right? I mean, it's just, it's, it's sort of like, it's like Zeno's paradox. If you have a yes means yes standard, the closer you get, the further away you are. And the, <laughs> the, the, the rea and, and again, sex is, uh, this is, this is where wi women really gave up on marriage a lot too soon. <laughs> okay, marriage was the best thing ever for women. It is an amazing, th it's a, an amazing thing for men too because it civilizes them, it cultures them, it teaches them to be protectors of their family and to take care of people and to think beyond themselves and to think beyond their generation. Women gave up in marriage a way to teach men to do those things and also women gave up the idea that a commitment was going to come along with this intimacy and let's be real about this. I mean, every scientific study ever done has shown that women actually do have better sex in the context of committed relationships. All of the crap that you see in Cosmo magazine about sleeping with 100 guys and being sexually happy is just garbage. It is just sheer, unadulterated garbage. So, I don't know, long answer to a short question, but reinculcation of traditional roles of male and female with the same feminist respect that we ought to have for women at all steps of the process is the answer. Thank you. I hope people are listening. <laughs>